Yo, 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 stop scrolling real quick, stop scrolling. This is Johnny D. the Shooter with the Stop Scrolling Podcast, the new season. And today's first guest is the one and only Mecca Jackson. Hold up, I said stop scrolling. What the, stop scrolling? Yo, yo, yo. Stop scrolling, <laughs> shit. Listen, 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 listen. You got me, Mecca Jackson. You got the food palooza, man. But besides that, you got other reasons. Take a listen. It's Johnny B. It's Mecca Jackson. What the fuck else you want? Yeah. Huh? 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 Stop scrolling. I swear to God, if you keep scrolling, if you keep scrolling. You better stop. I see stop. you. Stop and check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No shit, no shit. Are you ready? You Is you rolling? All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Stop Scrolling Podcast. This is the first episode of not the second season, but the next season. Because I don't know if I'm going to actually like stop after 12 episodes. But anyway, I've been trying to get this guy on for however many episodes. And he's finally here for the first episode. Bringing it in. Cheers to everybody. Cheers. Well, I got to figure out what camera am I looking at? This or I keep looking this at this camera? Phone. Yeah, this camera. Cheers to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm in the building, it's your boy Mecca Jackson. Look, he doesn't drink and shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm the drinker, he's the... Hey, here's the water. Alright. Oh, mm. the tap water, yeah. Anyway, alright, so... Uh, <sighs> so, Mecca Jackson is someone that I've known for, what, like over a decade and shit now, right? A minute, yeah. yeah. It's been a while. Um, We first started, like... Linking up for from this like pyramid scheme thing. Nah, tell them the real story. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so like, all right, so I was in this this pyramid scheme, this multi level marketing MLM. You know, this and, thing uh, got me. <laughs> I I was putting up ads around UTA, little flyers and shit. And he was like one of the only people that called me, and my only person that signed up under me. And then we kind of realized both pretty quick, like this is not working out. And, um, yeah, so we kind of stopped doing that. We, like, lost some money and shit, but it's it life. L. So it's it's life, like, dog. Okay, you know, now, like, Forex is, like, big and all that, but back then, uh, it was, what, five links? Five links, yeah. That's yeah. what it was. And oh, boy, I thought shit. it was, like, a real job opportunity. This, Bro, this I did, month. too. The first time I saw it, they got me. I was, like, I went high as fuck, so I didn't know what was going on. This motherfucker set up a whole interview and everything, so I went there. <laughs> Before I knew it, these niggas like just talked me and how this the manager was like a millionaire and he was this age and he was taking all these trips and showing me cars. Right. Before I knew it, I was giving him my card. I like <laughs> <laughs> same shit happened to me. That's how I got paid like six hundred. They're like, if you serious, then they will pay like six hundred on the spot. Bro, that whole drive home, nigga, I was like, what the fuck did I <laughs> Bro, just do? Bro, no. The next day, I was like, what the fuck just happened? Where am I right now? But uh, yeah, like um, that shit happened. Then I moved to North Dallas. Like I was in UT at the time, and Mecca started doing some music, uh, and I went to to Plano up up the Plano to like do some acting and shit. And that's how I got into camera work. And then I guess Mecca has seen the camera work and stuff on Facebook or whatnot, and was like, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm starting music and shit. I got these interview ideas." So we, we we started with that, and then since that that I guess instance, uh, it's just been like yeah, it was a, oh yeah, your world is ours. We had, was that oh, your world is the, ours? Uh, your world, yeah. I started the <laughs> website, blog site, brand. Your world is ours, and then we were getting ready to launch and needed content really. And this was look now that I think about it, this was before like. Like, I don't know, like, people weren't really, like, doing so video like, blogs like nah, that and all. all that. This was 2011. Yeah. Right, right. And so, we've kind of always been ahead of schedule. But even before that, remember you was staying, we, okay, when they was around UTA, when yeah. we went B.O.B. concerts. And the Ludacris one? I remember Nah, that. Ludacris before I got here. But whenever we used to drive, we used to like carpool to Five Links for the meetings. Yeah, we used to carpool. Freestyling yeah, and yeah. shit. There was this one time though. Well, that we, we, we almost, almost We almost killed ourselves by the roads because, you know, we were just so into what we were doing at the time. The road, 
did a 90 degrees and we went straight. We were freestyling and shit. And I might have been, no, I was, I was sober. We I were think just we were freestyling. Both sober. We just yeah, going, I think we were both sober. Go, and it was dark and the road just skirt. And, and I went yeah. uphill and shit. There was people after us, like, behind us and shit. They come up, are you okay? It was kind of embarrassing, but like, shit. But it just goes to show, like, everything happens for a reason. And yeah, I don't know why I even picked up whatever. Post this thing of posted at UTA, but I you had did. just come to UTA. Yeah, right? I just started and I was I just moved out here and I needed a job, and so I was like interviewing and I saw this opportunity, but this is the real opportunity right here. You know what I'm saying? And it just took that whole transition from then. But it's just like, yeah, exactly like I said, everything happens for a reason, and we just kept building, building, and we thought life was supposed to go this way, and it just went. This other way came yeah. back around in a twine. The Your World Is Ours thing happened. We started doing like, you start, he started getting heavy on the visuals. I started getting on the websites and music and all that stuff. Then we did the, we did the interviews. Y'all then, were doing shows a lot. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, but you started like with your videos and you take photography and then you did all our first like recap videos, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Martian music video. You shot yeah. that was my first music video ever. He did that, and then what? What were you doing before? Like, you came to UTA for what? For college, like, I mean, for well, finance marketing. Are you? Were you still doing that? What after you? No, what like you the whole the whole time. Yeah, I graduated with my degree in finance and marketing. Weren't you going for your masters? Yeah, I started that, but. I like Gwen How many people can say that? I can't even say that. He was you know going to school for his masters. I'm a, I'm a ma shit. masters dropout. Uh, <laughs> some Kanye shit. Hell yeah. But then I like ran out of my grants and then I had to come out of pocket. And yeah. then same time I was like, okay, after I, when I first graduated, I was doing real estate and shit in the corporate world. I had a fade and everything. <laughs> Wearing suits and ties. Oh, yeah. And then... But then at the same time, I was like living a double life because I'd be doing that and then get off and be, and I had, I had this, remember I had the studio in my room? Yeah. Well, a, a little setup with a yeah. mic and like pro tools. Mic in the and, closet and shit. Yeah. And I just, I was learning, I had FL Studio, learning how to make beats and then learning pro tools, learn how to like mix, master, record. And I was recording everybody's shit and I made couple albums of my own that you, uh, never even released. You made your, your first song, right? Martian Music was all you, right? Like you That whole, a ton of, yeah. Martian Music I produced, wrote, of course, recorded, mixed, master. I'm, I had like two albums that I like wrote, recorded, produced. Just I was on some like, I was just like, right, I'm gonna be on my Kanye shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna yeah, do yeah. everything. And then, and then I had... Yeah, I mean, all the homies, everybody, I had everybody, like, recording. I started getting booked how'd for you, shows. How'd you get into it? How'd you, like, start getting into to music? Like, did you want to always do music? or? Is I mean, happy? okay, like, whenever we'll fuck around, we'll, like, be freestyling and shit. So, I knew, I knew I could, I knew I had, to, if I put my mind to it, I had potential. But, yeah. of, of course, I'll, I've always, like, just followed hip-hop, like, I know every, I always knew who everybody was signed to, who produced what track on whatever. I was like going through all the booklets. I had all the Source magazines, XXLs, Vibes. So everything culturally, I was always, I'd, all my conversations in high school and that was always just about hip hop and shit. Mm. But then, Did I you think it was like. At that time, did you see yourself like being an artist? Not really. If anything, I was like, I'm going to start a label and be a mogul. So it was more wow. on the business side. Wow. And I just had the love for it. But then Bryce, Torrance, Eddie, all of them, there was already Emilio. Because mm -hmm. Eddie and Emilio, they was already producing. Or right. Emilio was playing, the, playing instruments, all instruments actually. Right. Bryce and Torrance, they were always like rapping they were doing open mics around uta and all that shit, oh, shit. and i was just the nigga gassing them up and shit mm. but then and that UTA, ex exactly but i was like the at the same time but i was i guess quote unquote popular so mm. i'd throw all the parties and mm. i just had my own way of dressing or whatever so people see me and just assume or ask me what do i do and shit or just already yeah. as from my character, I guess, or I don't know, they just already assumed I did music. 
But yeah. I never did. And then Vice Torres and they used to record in the dorms. And I remember it was, they did, um, Where did they Roger record? in who? A-Hall. Oh, shit. Chris Baker, he had like his, what was it called? You know who's a photographer now? Yeah, Chris he Baker? is. Yeah, Chris oh, Baker, shit. yeah. Chris Baker, Mike T. Chris Baker and Mike T, they all used to rap. And Torrance, oh, Torrance was telling me that. Yeah, they was yeah, in a yeah. group, so they all used to rap. And they had their little... I think I want to say it was audio suit or something. Mm -hmm. It was like a little setup. He had like the gamer headphone and mics and shit. And That's what they were using. Yeah, to record. Oh, it was shit. in the dorm room. Yeah, and they were doing this song. They were doing like coming up with a mixtape, and they had like they were remixing songs. So I think it was Bryce and Torrance and like Roger that, and mm. I was fucking around, and they were like. Why don't you get on it? Mm. And I was still joking like hell, and then I was like, right, "Fuck it." So right then and there, I just wrote a quick sixteen, and that shit just went off. Like after they dropped it, everybody was like, "Cause I guess okay, my verse is like, how do you even go? Yeah, okay, actually, I had used that beginning part for Marshes and Music Garden because it was like um, young AT alien, oh. million marshes marching, mm -hmm. lyrical gymnastics, flow flips on your best, there's no gimmick, galaxy sickle cell, sick flow, anemic. Yeah, 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 um, I remember that part. Barfing, well, you can rap a sick, bulimic. Take it back to the basics for these atheists, young believers, non believers, separate reality from my fiction, flow sporadic. But here the lyricism in my diction, number barracks, save the criticism, I'm wild, no restrict. This is my, this is my That's first. That's over everybody's hair right now. But these are my first fucking. First sixteen and that shit went. Yeah, now that I'm, I'm I ain't even spit that shit forever. But that's just how flames <laughs> right now. And shit. Bring and that bullshit. So cool everybody was like, damn, that shit went hard. And then I think I I put some bars in about these girls we used to know, Lanisha and um, Ashley Gazaway and mm -hmm. shit. And so like, everybody in school was like going crazy over it. And then from there, I just got gassed, and I was like, oh, shit, maybe did I can't have, Did you have, like, a, a musical influence at that time, or were you just going... Nigga, this is me fucking you? around. Yeah. Just lap. I wasn't even... But then from there, I started, like, writing more. Mm. And then, actually, J... Okay, I moved to Centennial. Then JD came around, mm -hmm. and JD, he was already... Recording and all this shit right. with like um, Eastwood and mm. I think he had like the Sayo Mulu gang stuff, and so JD took me to my first studio and shit. Like, which and, um, studio? Yeah, yeah, and um, I don't even remember. And like Dallas Lab Sounds, I want to say that's what it was. Okay. And he like plugged me in with this producer dude, I guess, because people like they they like they went to school there, so they mm -hmm. had like um, they had. Um, access to like studio time right but the finesse was they would like they had free access to it but they would charge people to come record so okay. he linked me up with this producer dude, i don't even remember his name and then he like gassed me also he was like oh yeah you can come record i'll get you i'll make a mixtape for you you can work on my beats he gave me a cd with hella beats and shit hell yeah and so i went damn that's old but, school yeah cd with beats so i was and jd he was he came to uta i guess um he went to school with eddie at now, this time, I had a, my apartment at Centennial. It was like a two-bedroom to myself, but all these niggas, like, lived in my crib and shit. Yeah, yeah. I used to let all of them just crash in. Eddie, Bryce, Emilio, JD. JD would bring his girl sometimes. You had that Centennial furnished apartment? Yeah, yeah, but it was just like me. Nigga, I never locked my door with some me casa, Sue casa shit. Niggas mm -hmm. don't rob me, stole whatever. Wear my yeah. clothes. I ain't even care and shit. Like, all these niggas just... Crashed with me and shit. So, JD, yeah, he, like, took me. Anyway, so I was like, all right. I, like, recorded. I, like, wrote to a lot of this, this nigga's um, fucking beats, right? Mm. So I went to start recording. So I recorded, recorded, recorded. Then this nigga hit me with the okie doke. He was like, all right, it's going to be $100 per song or some shit. So, for what? This is after for him to give me my tracks back and shit. What? Hit me with the super okie doke. After you had recorded? Yeah, I don't to it and all that shit. Oh. And so now I was like, all right, you know what? Fuck it. So this is just me as a person. I was like, all right, I like peep game. The whole mm -hmm. time while I was there, I'm also opening my eyes, learning how to record, punch in and out, yeah. d double stack, triple layer, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Learning all this shit. I didn't even realize it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Back to this whole, 
everything happens for a reason. That's probably gonna be like, the theme of this whole thing and shit. Yeah, yeah. And so I went back and I was like, uh, I was like bummed, but then by the next day I was like, fucking, I'm gonna do this shit on my own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I went and started looking up like shit for Pro Tools, looking up like YouTube tutorials, looking up Craigslist. I ended up finding somebody with like an inbox mini and they had mm -hmm. like a, then they showed me how to, so I got the inbox mini, I think for like 250. Bought a mic and a mic stand for like a hundred combined. Mm. This is just off Craigslist. Right. Then back then it was like the piratebay.com that was like big. Yeah. And so I like downloaded um, Pro Tools for free. I cracked the engine. Then I was like, fuck it, I might as well produce my own shit too. Yeah, yeah. Downloaded them um, Fruity Loops, like probably seven. I cracked the engine also. Then I s asked all these niggas, they'll tell you I'd be like locked in my room for like two months straight. Like, how important do you feel it is to, to be self-sufficient in knowing how to do shit? 100%, okay, like 100%, for someone like me, if you don't have the patience, mm. especially if I'm like, I mean, you know, I'm like hella, I have, I be having my own vision on how I want, like my ideas, I'm like hella particular with certain shit, mm -hmm. and I like it to come out how I see it in my mind yeah. so even right now when I go to right now if I go record in somebody's studio I have to like mix it myself because it's a a lot of people don't really have your vision now this just goes to you if you're if you're as critical artistically if you're not then yeah it's it's all it's all good and shit but yeah. me with all my with my graphics with my videos with my music with anything I do it's like I have these ideas in my head and it irks the fuck out of me when it doesn't come out how I hear it in my head. So yeah. I'm like particular about it. So at the same time, I can't necessarily be there all the time with an engineer tell him, oh, I um, do this, then do that, do this, then do that. Because I know how annoying it gets. So right. I try to do as much as possible on my own. And so that's that, probably the main reason I do it on my own. Cause that, yeah. And so that helped me earlier on just realizing that. And I was like, all right, okay, you know what? I just started learning shit one by one. I'm a fast learner also, so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna learn just one by one. Learn, learn how to make beats, even though they were trash at first. Mm. I still learn, so I know what to do now. If I gotta tweak a beat or whatever, I know right. what to do. Mixing, I learn how to do all that at like a fire ass level. Till today, I mix all my own shit too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll take it somewhere else to get mastered, but it's just the uh, and down to like graphics or whatever. It just helps. You on the long run, like as far as like bringing the whole yeah, because then you can actually have a shit. final say and and know why you're you're having this final say as opposed to be like, all right, yeah, I guess so. I guess I exactly. see your vision type shit. And then financially also, because like I said, <clears throat> right now if you wanted to go to the studio to record or if you don't know nobody back then, I'll just start. I didn't know nobody. Now it's a couple of studios or people I can like record for free. But back then. It was at least maybe like 20, 30, 40 an hour and extra yeah. for like mixing. And that's just one song, you know what I'm saying? So that's I had to that's like... without even paying for the beat and shit. Exactly. So I had to learn. So I just said, fuck it, I'm going to do everything on my own. Instead of spending... So what he was trying to charge me, I did 10 songs. trying to charge 100 a song. That would have been $1,000. For $250, I bought Pro Tools for 100 mic and mic stand. So that's 350 the all the softwares I got for free, I, I hacked all them shits for free. Mm. So that was their investment and then I was able to make probably like a hundred plus songs for me, all my homies, everybody yeah. would just come to my room, record. I'll like mix it best I can and we're just tossing shit out. I feel like like that's one reason why I have all this shit, cause like I like having people come in. So I can learn how to mix their shit. Cause I'm not yeah. I don't wanna just be like, oh I know how to do myself. Like Nah, I know how to do you, I know how to do you, I know how to do you, that type of exactly. shit. Exactly, and that's that's what helped me all, because it's also knowing what they're trying to do. Like, when somebody records, knowing, okay, I can hear the song, I know, I can tell, all right, on this part here, of the make maybe I'm at, like, triple stack it so it sounds more like a hook, and mm. pan it this way, that way, or I know, I just know what sounds to, oh, I know to add, to um, skew it, Add this EQ on the vocals here to make yeah. it sound more like telephone or on the or reverb here, delay, you know what I'm saying? And just so it just adds to your adds to your little repertoire mm -hmm. and it helps it's hard to explain, but you just gotta like die for it. Part of it's a lot to being an artist, you know what I'm saying? You could just yeah. be the, the artist on the surface layer and shit, just have everybody do it for you, but 
when you don't have the luxury, when you're, of course, super independent, trying to make the come up, and quality still matters, yeah. you got to get hands-on with it. It's either that or you just got to have bread to make sure you pay and make sure, like, your quality is yeah. up there and shit. So, like, with, um, like, you haven't been really doing too much music lately, like, as far as, like, being consistent with it. Like, when you first started, you, a lot of people know you as, like, the host, you yeah. know, the uh, person throwing shows and shit. So how do you, like, how do you explain your transition from being an artist to being a facilitator for artists? All right, so this is back to the same. Everything happens for a reason, right? So okay, back then I had we we, right, we left off at this whole studio and I was knocking out song maybe like a song a day. Right now I can, if I think to make a song, I can write a whole song in in my head in like thirty minutes to an hour. I can go record it if I want to, make the beat for it, whatever. I can knock out songs fast. That's not even a problem. So I was just knocking them shits out fast. Then we started getting shows. Mm -hmm. And we started getting um, booked. And then as um, the show started getting more and more, then I started doing, we started throwing our own parties also, right? Then I peeped the business side of it also because some of these shows... I would bring like 50 people out like when I when we opened up for Chief Keef Chief Keef's like first show in in Dallas That's that was our right. first like big show ever so I probably sold like 75 tickets to open up for him right and again I didn't make a dime off that you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but I did it for the opportunity and shit you know right. what I'm saying so again I was dropping more videos frequently more songs more frequently and so I was kind of like also getting known as an artist, but then back to just being a boss, I wasn't making, I wasn't making no money like that. You know what I'm saying? I was just being, I'll pack other people's shows and just be appreciative of the opportunity, right. which I wasn't tripping on because I was getting to know the, the scene. I was understanding how show business side of it works and everything. Mm -hmm. Then I think it was, um. I started throwing my own parties and I would like just be on the mic emceeing yeah. and people liked how I emceed and so I started getting booked to host and so I got started getting booked to host. Now when you're hosting, you control the whole event, right? Pretty much. More than so, the promoters and shit, right? Exactly. So you, I'm pretty much on the mic for like four hours. Mm. So then I'm like, okay, I'm doing, I've been doing all this, selling all these tickets and everything to have a 10 minute set. Right? Damn. Now motherfuckers booking me and I'm on the mic for four hours. Right. I can do whatever I want. I can perform when I want. I can control the crowd. I can crack jokes. I yeah. can do whatever I want. So it was the okay. I I then I realized, okay, my as far as performing, my passion for that was just that ten minutes was such a high. Just them three songs they would let me do, yeah. and I'll give it my all. And it was just like controlling the crowd and energy. Energy's contagious, so it was just like transferring that to the crowd, making people laugh, making people turn up, whatever the case is. There's right? a big difference though with that that ten minutes compared to those four hours, right? There's a huge difference. Not everybody can, and it's just entertaining for ten minutes, and it's your own song. Then entertaining a crowd for four hours. You're right? not just entertaining though. You're like kind of like well at football pools especially like you're yeah. If it's my exactly shit. so my if it's I'm just saying when people book me to host, mm -hmm. um they booking me. I'm there from the start when people are still filling in. Yeah. To sometimes it might get less packed at one end. Whatever the case is, I don't care if it's five thousand people in the crowd. If it's just four people in the crowd, I'm still entertaining them the whole mm -hmm. way. I'm still controlling the crowd. Now, when it's like Fubu Palooza or my own events I'm, I'm throwing, then that's even a hundred times harder because it's a lot of shit going on behind the scenes. Shit yeah. I got to deal with as far as like the the show flow, coordination of it, all the like financially, all the like shit behind the scenes as far as like um bookings and if it's a headliner, making sure the back end is right. Yeah. If it's like if I'm dealing with artists trying to um, deal with the different personalities or like making sure they the DJ has their songs working mm -hmm. out the transitions, 
doing uh, make people like blowing up my phone asking me stupid questions where to park or all, all the that time stupid even shit. up to the show and yeah shit. or at the same time maybe some shit happen oh the ticket link is down oh this it just be so much bs going on or yeah. this person trying to, i gotta get this ticket money from this person i gotta turn this into this person i gotta so it'd be so much bs going on and i still gotta keep it keep the vibe there yeah. and keep as far as being an MC, still control the crowd and still make sure everybody's having a good time because I'm the source of energy at this point. Mm. For the whole event, I'm controlling the whole vibe, so I got to make sure my vibe is right. But behind the scenes, it's all this damage control I'm doing and shit. Yeah. But I get on the mic and you, you can't even tell. And I'm just making sure everybody's having a good time. Mm. So, But then if I'm not, of course, if it's not my event, and I'm just booked to host a party or some shit, then yeah, it's like easy going. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, you, I know I'm, I'm getting paid with a couple hundred dollars, whatever the case is. And you're pretty much just like guiding, guiding the show along. Yeah, the I'm just co controlling the energy pretty much. And I'm just making sure everybody's having a good time. Everybody, energy levels are up there. Yeah. And some of that, a lot of that really just comes naturally. You know what I'm saying? That's just so me. What would you say? Like, I guess like a two part question. Like, what would, what is the best advice you would give yourself now? Like if you can give your give your younger self advice about becoming an artist, yeah, and becoming a host. Like what what is the most important things that you would say? Honestly, okay, it's like um, I would have been a. I feel like everything just transitioned as a. I I never planned on. I never planned on learning how to produce and engineer and all that shit. Yeah. It kind of just happened because I didn't want to wait on somebody. Now, with hosting, throwing my own events, I took that into... Because I instead of, like like I said, instead of like having to wait for promoters to book me, mm -hmm. I can create the opportunity for myself. Yeah. It's just back to that same mindset where I'm not waiting on somebody to do this, that, and the third. I'm going to just create the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting on somebody to book me to perform for 10 minutes, I can, now they're booking me to host the whole event and I can perform whenever I want, right? right? And this is on a weekly basis. I get, thank God, I, every week I'm like booked somewhere, sometimes mm -hmm. three, four times a week. But then besides me being booked, I throw my own events to where I can do whatever I want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, if I want to perform, I perform whenever I want to perform. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As me, if I want to perform back to back, I can do that. It's my event. You know what I'm saying? I don't do it, but if I wanted to, I can. But it's just, I had to make that transition as a boss also to get to where, okay, I'm not waiting on this nigga to book me for 10 minutes where I'm not making no money off of it. I'm just selling tickets to open up for whoever. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm booking all them niggas I was opening up for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can book them and I can open up. I can get also creating a platform to where back then also used to be so much, so much politics in Dallas and everything to where a lot of talented acts. That's another thing I was frustrating. That's why I had Fruit Palooza. Also, a lot mm. of people, a lot of artists, a lot of vendors, they don't have that many platforms or outlets where if you're dope, there's nobody just like scouting you like, hey, I seen you, you dope, yeah. just come perform, you ain't got to do nothing, I mean promote if you want, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not making, I'm not charging no vendor fees, I'm not making people pay for no slots, mm. but I got to find you, there's no amount of pressure in me that's going, right, you know what I'm saying, right. so I just, I curate a lineup and I just pick people who I feel are dope, you know what I'm saying, so now it's just really about the art and taste level, it's not about no... I don't need anybody in particular to sell a show. I don't even mm. need a headliner now. It's just the it sells itself. It, Food Palooza is gonna get packed, yeah. but I'm giving people. An, I can give people an opportunity. Hey, you. I see. I don't care if you got ten followers. I like how this one song sounds with your band. Come mm. through. You. I see. Damn, that painting of Prince was cold. Come set yeah. up a vendor table. Just bring your own table. Fuck it. You ain't gotta pay for nothing at the same yeah. time on my inbox every single social media platform it's i get at least 50 people a day trying to pay me to perform but yeah. that's just the difference you know what i'm saying where any promoter would take that and oh, yeah, any promoter would take that and that kind of like hurts the quality but mm -hmm. i rather i just do things from a different taste level but i had to i feel like i had to do all that 
to be where I'm at now to where it's more about like creative freedom to where now tomorrow I can make these songs. I can make a, if I wanted to dedicate two weeks, I can make an album in two weeks. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And put out an album and now have a platforms, not only in Dallas, but in Austin and Denver and LA and New York and North Carolina and Corpus Christi. Everywhere. We're overseas too, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm Le- looking at playing shit. myself and, in London and fucking Leicester. Stun a little bit. You stun a little I'm about bit. to do <laughs> Tokyo in March and shit. You so know, anyway. With, have, he, with Africa and shit too? In, I'm here for getting places. The, in the Nigeria, motherland and shit. Everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I do, I've done events in all these places. And all these now circling full circle wise. These are platforms where I can perform my music. I can make music whenever. I can perform whenever. At the same time, I can get homies to come perform whenever. I can get homies to come showcase their whatever their craft is. Do you think, and, um, like, the promoters that, that you were dealing with when you were an artist back in the day, do you think that type of promoter or whatever is diminishing as, as opposed to, like, your influence on the way you're approaching things? Do you think you're influencing other people to kind of, like, follow that lead? I try, I try to, but then that's the thing, though. Like, this is another thing with, with life. Like, there's Darwinism in everything, you know what I'm saying? So, the the good is always going to outweigh the bad. Positive mm-hmm. always going to outweigh negative. Light always going to outweigh darkness, you know what I'm saying? It might take time, but it always happens. So, all these promoters I'm speaking of from when I started, they're not even here anymore, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So... Um, Two Chains has that line. OGs never fed us. Now young niggas fed up, and that's just facts. So it's mm-hmm. like now we're changing the narrative to where it's just a lot more. Where a lot of the I guess curators in Dallas now. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. It's still always going in any in any market is always going to be like the I guess the janky promoters right. or the. But it's easier to see through all of that, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. and a lot, of, but it's a lot more people genuinely putting on, not necessarily being greedy or money hungry, or it's just people like genuinely putting on out of the passion for it, and that's just where it starts and shit. And you know what I'm saying? Just out of passion, when you do shit out like pure passion for the art and culture, people can tell. And then, like Food Palooza, it's only been a year, but it's just grown so fast, really just off the really? formula. Yeah. And just how I'd really credit it to just me empowering creative creatives, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I just did Denver this past weekend, and all of them are thanking me for like putting Denver on and mm-hmm. this, that, and the third. And I'm like, and I'm at the same time, I'm throwing it back to them, like, nah, like, don't even think, nigga, hope you're now okay. They, it's like a scene created now from this group yeah. losing. Austin's that. like that too, right? Yeah, yeah. that just never kind of existed. They all might have known of each other, but they never had an event where all of them were on. Yeah. And now it's like this scene I've kind of like just meshed together. And so now I'm pushing them to, all right, nigga, go ahead and do a fashion show. Go ahead and do another hip hop show. Just, you know what I'm saying? Do your own shit to where. Just keep it going. Exactly. So now when I come back with. The second one in Denver, it's go all of y'all are bigger. The crowd is bigger. It's mm-hmm. gonna be bigger, and that's the only way this is gonna work. You know what I'm saying? So I I'm was like, I was talking to Bryce about that, like how Football Palooza has grown, and like every time it the show pops up, it's almost like going back to school. You know, like especially like high school and shit. Like you got summer vacation, you come back, you're like, oh, what's up? Nice to see you, type shit. And it's like, people be coming up, and like it's all love. For the most, like, pretty much, it's all love when you see these people again. Because, like, everyone everybody, has progressed. Yeah, and, every, and everybody's kind of, like, everybody kind of, like, follows each other, mm-hmm. keeping tabs, either, like, you know what I'm saying, soft or hard. But then it's, like, it's just, like, a, it is, like, a, I mean, like, a reunion. That way you put yeah, it all, like, yeah. after you take a break, like, for Christmas break and you come back and everybody mm-hmm. got, like, you come back with your back-to-school clothes and shit. And it's, yeah. like... Everybody like gets to see each other. Like, everybody people got new this. pieces. People got new fucking songs. People exactly. Got new videos and all this. It's like yeah. And it's happened just organically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had the idea of it for us by us, but then as far as how everything's kind of just grown on its own, I can't even. I mean, I, 
I can't even say like I, because a lot of people think it's like this. It was, I mean, it was kind of surface level plan, but mm -hmm. it wasn't just like, I'm not a planner. I'll, I'll be promoting food losers and like. 10 days out, I'll just have a rough idea. Yeah. You do the flyer, I end up doing the, we end up doing the flyer, I end up doing all the fucking the physicals, uh, the individuals, mm -hmm. yada, 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 piece it together, bam, and then however it happens, it always just ends up happening as it's supposed to. And now yeah. whether it's, it'd be like stupid shit happen, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe shit, shit with the sound has been or... Yeah. Well, and the one with uh, with Mike Jones where it was hella hot or whatever, but oh, sometimes yeah. that adds to the story. We were laughing about that online, how hot it was. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's not even like a if it was somebody else's event, and they were like, "Oh man, it was hot in there." Da, da, da. Yeah. Listen. But with these, it just adds to the whole experience. We can laugh about yeah, it. Yeah, that's and what I like. It's about part it. of like the growth, and it's all organic. And I keep it, I keep a base level to where I'm not, I'm not this entity that's like so far fetched now I'm one of yeah. everybody it's just I'm one of the homies and we're it's, just it's waking like they, up you they, know what I'm saying if they come up to you like they can talk to you yeah and I never that's what I was thinking one time I was, I was like do I even want to be famous like that shit is cause I enjoy this underground shit so much I'm I like know. do I really want to be famous where I can't walk to Walmart or no I like I enjoy being regular as fuck like when yeah. I even when I go to other people's events to support I enjoy being there in the crowd I enjoy being in front of stage hyping up yeah, whatever sometimes artists sometimes you be like, jumping down off the stage and yeah, you, you'll be watching them I enjoy that shit rather than like if I go to I don't care to be backstage I mean to other people it's like a thing being on stage or in sections but mm. I do sh I do events every weekend. That shit is that shit don't mean nothing to me. Like yeah. that's the fakest where where the fakest people are is backstage. It's not even that fun to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I be trying to get away from. I notice like every any event or show you go to, you always end up on the stage by the DJ. Yeah, but always. sometimes that's like those be my homies, the yeah. DJ and shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's me like gas them up. Also like. Telling the DJ, like, play this next and shit. Even if I'm not booked, I'm, like, still, like... Yeah. I'm, I, I still want the event to be as live as possible, so I'll still go tell the DJ, hey, play this song right now, right now, and then I fuck around, jump back in crowd and start a mosh pit or something, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. just me. I, like, if I'm, at, if I'm at an event, I'm there to have as much fun as possible, and I try to create fun for myself, so... Right. That's part of me turning up. It's not necessarily... Part of it is for the crowd, but part of it is also for me. I, like having fun and shit. Mm -hmm. So like, where do you see Fubu Palooza? Do you have a uh do you have like the future of Fubu Palooza in sight or are you even looking? Let me see. I feel like okay, like in the in the grand scheme, I for sure as far as just the whole idea of it. Now, what the name is one thing, but as far as the whole idea of it, like in the grand scheme I just want like the biggest okay you have Rolling Louds you have Coachella mm -hmm. and all that but I want it to be its own entity on the biggest magnitude but then this is like super eventually you know what I'm saying where I can have not just the biggest artists a platform for all of them perform but then mix in the biggest artists with some local nigga that didn't even think he would get picked you right, know what I'm saying right. on a stage you you about to perform with Beyonce just because you go hard and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mixing in, I have like Jeremy Scott or Virgil with like uh with like let me see who's a local designer like always or somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But just and one main thing about Food Palooza is really just stripping the ego out. Yeah. Canceling the ego to where everything's like about your. I don't care how many followers you have, whether you have. A million followers, or you have five followers. It's about just the quality of your your paint. If you have a painting, I don't care if you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. Okay, like I say this all the time. Like fucking um, the the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. That shit is not as fire as you know what I'm saying. It's fire because yeah. it because of Leonardo da at Vinci that, yeah, and at his that time they never and seen his it before clout and shit now, but. Yeah. I know hella niggas that can paint way like For sure. fire, but Mona Lisa now he's 
built his reputation and everything, all the smoke and mirrors around it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if nobody knew Leonardo da Vinci, nobody knew who Picasso was, nobody knew who um, fucking Rembrandt. Whoever yeah, you, like who, anybody, anybody who paints and shit, and you just, I right, let's just fuck the name beside it. Let's just play the art alone, and you couldn't mm -hmm. even identify. That's what it's about, you know. what I'm saying now we're just talking about just the art, appreciating it, yeah. not necessarily saying, oh, I. Now you're skewed. You want to appreciate this more just because of the hype around it. Right. It's really just appreciating the base level. It's all dope, you know. what I'm saying so as an as. So what what advice would you give to an up and coming artist, whether it be visual artist or audio artist? What what's like the path that you think that they should follow to be not only successful but happy as well? I feel like um, okay, in independence first of all, right now, but that's so I guess that's kind of vague. Or a lot of people throw that word around loosely. Like monetary independence but, or like... No, just in the, artistic. independent artistically and creatively mm. to where... Okay, if you... Like, who, who you want to use, like a painter or a visual artist? Yeah, we, we, we use a painter. Okay, okay, let's say you're a painter, right? Mm. You you know, oh man, I got this job in painting since high school. I want to get more out there. Now you're probably looking online, you're seeing all these people... Damn, I can do way better than them. And she has, she be posting her pictures with herself nude. So now she got 20,000 followers and shit. Mm -hmm. How do I get there? All right. First step is like, first of all, don't worry about what anybody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? That is vital. Their journey has nothing to do with, if not, if there was one particular formula, everybody would do it and everybody would have made it. Right. Secondly, there are no rules at all. Like, right. Right. Absolutely no rules. That's like to, something that cannot be stressed enough. There are no to rules. Nothing. Especially you do it, in art. Exactly. You do it your own way. It doesn't know however you've seen it work for somebody doesn't doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Sometimes I could set you back. Mm -hmm. There are no rules. What worked for somebody doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Then timing wise, just because it's somebody's time now, your time could be in another five years, could be another ten years. You should, if you have passion for it, you should be okay with whenever it happens. You yeah. know, yeah, because it could also be next week and shit. You could be it's thinking, like, enjoy the journey. Exactly, it's about that journey through it. So it could be tomorrow. Anybody can stumble on your shit from a hashtag, yeah. and bam, you know what I'm saying. But even if that doesn't happen, and it happens next year, or it happens another ten years, that journey is all it's about. It shouldn't even matter to you. You should just enjoy. Doing this so much where regardless of when it happens, even if you're 80, mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter. Once you've like broken down in your head those first, th these first three steps, I actually just came up with that right now, right? But it makes so much sense. Write that sense. shit down. Once you like broken down these steps and shit, and it's like, all right, fuck it, I really love this. You got to have that love for it. I really love painting. I don't care. Whether I blow up or not, I just really love painting, and this mm -hmm. is what I want to paint for the rest of my life. Then and now, you focused on the fourth thing. Would be now you focused on growing your craft, getting better at painting every day. If it's just fucking, I don't know, watercolor. Now you're experimenting with oil, pa mm -hmm. pastels, whatever. And now you're going into murals, graffiti. Now you, and this mindset. As far as just trying to grow and keep elevating, that's really what's going to take you there. Because next thing you know, you're going to get into, all right, how do I digitize this? Yeah. Then you're going to get into, all right, how do I print this on a shirt, a hood, on hoodies? How do I monetize it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, before you know it, you can paint on paper, you can draw. You Now, this is you just made yourself this whole asset, and you just created so much value to where you can do logos for people. Besides your own paintings, you can do logos for people, you can do flyers for people, you can do self-portraits for people, you can um, make clothes and merch for people, mm -hmm. you can paint paint murals for offices and businesses and shit, you know? You see how quick that just happened right now? Right. Now look where you at, you know what I'm saying? You have these talents where you can do all this. If you get stuck yourself in this girl who had all these followers with this painter 
and you're trying to do stupid shit to go viral, maybe. Or you're you, trying to follow some rules that you think are exactly. In place. You never have gotten here and shit. Yeah. Now just oh. all this is just coming as I'm talking and shit. You know what I'm saying? But now you're here, and now you have now you develop your own brand or your own style in the process to where now people are affiliate you with this style. Then right. next thing is networking. Get out there, do events, hit up. Wherever you see an art show, whatever, whatever, or whenever it's going to be people there, they can pull up on Deep Ellum and shit in a corner, display all your artworks, have cards, let people follow you, let people see your yeah. paintings. Just be more visible. Do do paintings for celebrities and shit. Pull up on them at their meet and greets. Give it to them. Take pictures with them. You know what I'm saying? This also works not just with just uh, painters and shit. Like no, this is all just across all board. across. We're just, I just... That's why I said, let, let's just pick one thing to work with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But get visible, get your painting out there. Now you're known. With now it's just it's a numbers game. The number of people you meet and you pass. Let's say you have a card, mm -hmm. and the number of people are aware of you painting. The number of followers you have now, and it just keeps growing. Mm -hmm. You keep networking every weekend. Again, this is something you love. It's not even gonna seem like you're working. You just keep painting, keep figuring out ways to let people see your painting. Yeah. And this is going to grow exponentially, whether it's 10 people, then 100, then 1,000. You might even start doing, um, what's the little videos they do when they show like the time lapse of them painting and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just figure yeah, out ways to... talking about that the other day. Yeah, figure out ways to just immerse yourself in your craft. But this is about you, your craft. You should be so focused on you. You're just going to keep thinking of new ways every day to just... Be more creative about your craft. Immerse yeah. yourself in it. But then figure out how to be more interactive. How to grow your fan base based on your craft. And then it's just going to happen on its own. You know what I'm saying? And before you know it, it's going to be a trajectory. And before you know it, it's... Yeah, your followers are going to grow. Anything can happen at that point. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, if it's, a, if it's an opportunity with a company or a Google or Nike or whatever... Mm -hmm. and, Designing sneakers, whatever. Before it could just the fucking the the sky's the limit, literally. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But once you the premise of it, just keep applying yourself. Then on it, back to the independence I started off with. You get to a certain level. Now you've been doing all this. Let's say all this took you a year, two years. Now you can start throwing your own art shows. That's what people like get get hung up on because they want it now. Yeah, like, they don't, it can't, they don't it can't happen like, now. Yeah, you know? it shit takes. You gotta time. let it happen. You gotta let the universe happen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it could be six months. It doesn't have to be a year, two years, depending on how fast you're moving with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you got you can't be that that um. I mean, anxiety is good, but you gotta like let it happen. Also, you know what I'm saying? How long you have you been in this process? Game? Like almost when, a decade, right? No, when did we... Um, 2011 was the first time I remember we started filming. But I don't know yeah. if we were doing shit before that. Nah, that like, was, it was that... That was the first, I guess... Yeah, well, so that's like, when I just I had just recorded. So and that's years. Like, he's been putting in years of work. To but then, you see, I started... Yeah, okay, so 2011, that's when I just started recording and all mm -hmm. that shit. Then we probably started doing shows, like... The little um, shit in Arnetic and all, 2012. Mm -hmm. And then, so 2012, 2013, kind of grew. So as far as like, so maybe as far as, um, it's been like five years as far as actually like hosting and throwing. Yeah. yeah. But then Food Palooza really just been a year ago. So it's just been, so I did all of that to be able to get to where, okay, I have, I realized, damn, I have this whole network of, all these people I've worked with before, all these people I know, I'm going to bring all of them together and let's just... And so how do you avoid the politics? Or how do you one, suppress I, the politics? I don't, I don't, me, okay, that's another thing, that's why I like fight for people who can't do that, because ever since whether high school, middle school, preschool, whenever, I've always been the most, I've always been like popular in whatever class or whatever school, mm -hmm. but... I've been the nigga that can, where if, okay, if it, if she was secluded and those cool kids and there was nerds and there was whatever, who, whatever different tables, I'll, depending on how I feel that, I'll sit on whatever table, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't care. 
I mix. I, I was the one that mixed. I was like mix everybody in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And everybody was like cool me just cause. So I never like. I just don't have an ego. So I never thought of my. I never thought too hard into. I never tried to be cool. Mm -hmm. I do what I want, wear what I want. I never tried, but at the same time, everybody just like fucked with me just off that basis, and that's kind of just not changed to where now a lot of. I still see it's still a lot of politics. A lot of people try to do the politics thing, but mm -hmm. I don't need them. That's the difference. I make yeah. sure I don't. When I, why I do at the point where I feel like I need, I end up learning what you're doing and doing it better. That's, and that's being self sufficient. The, Learning, exactly, and learning that's been the same. The way. That's what we've been talking about. So back to the the recording with the studio and everything to events. Instead of waiting for people to book me, mm. starting my own events, doing it my own way and shit. Down to so any at any given moment where I feel like, all right, I can't do this. I'm I'm needing somebody too much. Mm. I'll take the time out and learn how to do it and shit. Right. So that's how I x. You got to always x out the middleman, and mm. it's just getting that direct to. Fan connection, and even as an artist, I tell artists all the time, shit, throw your own listening party, throw your own show. There's no rules to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't need me or anybody to book you. You can like, you can get this shit on your own. It's always gonna be politics, and it's even worse because when you get in the actual industry, I've I started being in the just dealing with a lot of artists, a lot of managements, a lot of like labels with people I book and everything. Yeah, it's a fake ass industry. Like they double talk everything. Everybody is fake. It's more about what you can do. So you just got to keep it. Mm. No one keep it business. I don't come at anybody with I don't ask for no favors. I don't ask for no handouts. If I come at you with something, if I need something from you, I'm coming at you first with, okay, I'll do this for you. Yeah. You got to do this back. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's another thing y'all got to learn. Like, don't, especially for somebody you don't know, don't ask somebody you don't know for any favors. Don't ask them to put you on for any favors, come at them. If you want it to be effective, if you want more results, come at them with a offer and then let let what you want be the be what you're getting yeah, back. You know what I'm saying? For you so if it's an event you see a promoter having and that you want to get on, instead of sending the promoter your link and, hey, put me on, the, can I perform at this? So I'm going to pipe that bitch up, whatever y'all be DMing and shit. This is what the promoter's going to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I see you got yaddy yaddy coming. If you know you have a... You got to work... Now you got to look at yourself. All right, as an artist, I know this shit is three weeks away. I can bring 20 people out. Now you can tell the promoter, hey, I see you got yaddy yaddy yaddy. Look, I can bring 30 people out. Mm -hmm. if, you can, if you give me some physical tickets... I want to perform. Yeah. The promoter's not going to say no to me. That's all promoters care about. This is right. not me. I'm cheating for other promoters because I don't, I don't even respond to my DMs like that. But a lot of promoters, they care about how much money, how lucrative you are financially, how much money you can make them. Right. So you, now you just came out of with something for them to consider. Do you, every promoter has hella links in their DMs. You know what I'm saying? Now they might be more incentivized to check out your music, you know what I'm saying? And they know yeah. you have this fan base, they know you can bring out this many people. If you know, then you can work out business to where, okay, I can bring this many people out, let's say tickets are $10 or $15. If I could, now you can maybe work out something to where you make $5 a pop off. If you bring 30 people out, five times 30, that's $150 yeah. you can make, and then you're making the promoter. 10 times 30, 300, whatever Why the case is. Why do you think some artists aren't successful in the underground scene as far as, like, getting into shows and, and getting noticed? They just go about it the wrong way, you know what I'm saying? First of all, yeah, like I said, just like the scenario I just gave, it's a simple scenario that could work for anybody, but mm -hmm. a lot of artists are looking for people to put them on, looking for people to... To do favors a lot of, nowadays, a lot of people are lazy. A lot of people rather just That's the word right be there, yeah. online, and they don't understand the how more impactful like ground marketing and actually like mm. networking in person. A lot of people, you uh, yes, you could people ask, try to give me okay. I book people from people I've seen perform before, mm. and I know oh, I, I remember him at this show. He had these people singing his lyrics. Yeah, he's gonna go hard. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But some of y'all, y'all never attend. You never, you you haven't even come to an event to come to support. 
instead of DMing, pull up on pull up to the event, pay to get in, mm. buy a promoter a drink, go shake his hand, look him in the eye, talk business, let's work. You know what I'm saying? That's how Have it works. Have a human connection with someone. That DM shit, that shit doesn't work at all. You got to like actually... Because that shit is easy. easy. The hard shit is like... Yo, what's up, Mecca? Like, I, I, I'm uh, whatever. Exactly. And then I'm going to remember you and I'm more inclined to follow you back, to yeah. check out your shit right there and there. Fucking Amon. That's that's how he said he, he got in with you because he was up there turning up and you were like, what, what the fuck you doing? Type that's shit. how it happens all the time. I, mean, I, I book people. Okay. Amon, for example, I probably maybe his first or second show. I, I, he, I was hosting. He was there. I fucked with his energy. Mm. And then he followed me, and or he was yet to, he was like, yeah, man, I, I'm I'm starting to rap. Da, 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 da. I was yeah. like, hey, just hit me up. I got you. And he hit me up. Any actually, I just plugged him up on the Tay Money. I just um, yeah, like they were looking for openers. He's yeah. the first one I suggested for like Hell Tay yeah. Money's um party that I'm hosting next um what next on the 29th. Whatever yeah, that yeah. is. But anyway, that's just how it happens. Like. Uh, this just happens in person, so he didn't DM me. I would never have seen his DM. He was at an event in real life. Yeah, yeah. I seen his energy. He talked to me like a human being, and I followed up. The next time it was an opportunity, I was like, hey, yaddy, 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 here you go. You know what I'm saying? Come through yeah. perform, just um, promote, whatever, whatever. And I've given him hell opportunities because I know he's going to promote. I know he's going to bring people. Yeah. When He always brings one of the biggest crowds. Like, exactly. Like, when people like, and this wasn't, he probably had 100 followers on Twitter then and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't even, he didn't have no followers and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's just off his, him hey, me, me in person. It's not about no follow. I don't care about that. He doesn't seem to have no ego either. No. And that's, that. these people I fuck with. So, because a lot of people like that. They the ones who would. Bring out more people because they they genuinely have fans that fuck with them. Yeah. That online shit is super smoke and mirrors. Like yeah. niggas have all these followers, get have all these retweets, whatever the case is. But in real, I know for a fact because I've done hell events with them in real life. They're they're coming through with maybe like three people and two of them. They try oh this is my manager, oh this uh, can my girl get in? Yeah, and then, oh this one. Yeah, and it's just all that this shit is for show and it. Especially me, I don't. I'm not a promoter. I don't need y'all. So right. I don't need you to sell a show. I don't need you. The crowd is already gonna be there. So if I'm booking you, I'm really booking you for the entertainment side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I try to. We like people like Amon. I try to figure out how to make, help him make money. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'll give him like, like thirty tickets. He'll hit me up when he sold all that. I ask for more. The whole right. time he's making. We're splitting that shit in half, maybe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he's keeping five to ten dollars off each ticket he sold, and he's making that way. Cause I know, okay, I can't pay you, but here you go. You work and you make some money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you're making I think hundred fifty dollars, two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars yeah. off your own performance. You I get think money he's in one that pocket. understands that like there are really no rules, so he's approaching it his own way. And, like, you kind of answered my question, what I was going to ask you. I was going to be like, so as a, as, as Fubapalooza's, like, creator, what do you expect or what do you search for? What what do you want uh, as, like, highlights, you know, highlights of the show and shit? And you pretty much said, like, just the genuine connection as opposed to people trying to pay to pay for a slot, people trying to, like get you to notice them by, you know, electronically contacting you as no, opposed facts. to, like, real, real connections and shit. And, like, nobody remembers, like, you can be scrolling through your fucking feed, see something you like, and never think about it ever again. Facts. Like, you'll like, remember something. If I see you, I'm gonna remember you. Because I remember, like, like visual context and shit. Exactly. But. And like I said, I get 50 DMs at least a day on... On my on my Twitter, on my IG, just people trying to, hey, when's the next show, bro? Hey, put me on, hey, check out the, the, the I'm gonna pipe that bitch, the, 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 yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? But with Food Palooza, like what I, I think the part that I really enjoy most about it that people don't, that I don't even know how to how to say it. Okay, the part that gives me the most joy mm -hmm. 
this shit happens all the time, right? I'm gonna be on, I'll be on like maybe Twitter or IG or Facebook, and I see, I see this homie and this, or these, this homegirl and this homegirl, or this homie and this homie, and these niggas fuck around got a song already, yeah. or they're planning a road trip or a party or some shit. Yeah. And I know for a fact. I've known this one for this amount and this one, and I know they never knew each other. Yeah. I know, I remember when they met at Food Palooza. Now, they got songs together. Now, they're friends. And now, I'm looking like, yeah. damn, this motherfuckers ain't even invite me to, like, or I see, I see, <laughs> they post a picture yeah. together where they, like, they went somewhere, and I'm like, these motherfuckers ain't even invite me and shit. And, but then, it's like, I like that shit makes me laugh, but then yeah. I like I like appreciate that. It's like damn, that's crazy. Like these motherfuckers, like how the fuck are they even? I like y'all are my friends, but then, for real, for real. But it's like y'all are like kicking it, fucking with each other now and shit. And I appreciate that. It's like just and that's the part. Like I guess it happens in turn. And it's like yeah. knowing okay, I they would that would never have happened. Like I I like just I guess I just. I instant I propagated that or kind of like facilitated yeah, that without facilitated. even knowing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I didn't even. Sometimes I see it happening. I didn't. I don't even remember when y'all. I just know I put both y'all on this event and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And or sometimes it be, be happening with even people from out of town and shit. From like. Okay, my brother, I was just with him in Denver and he, shit. Denver, yeah, he be hitting me up about, like... Yeah, and shit. he was, like, asking me about, like, Bryce or something. And I'm like, nigga, like, right, you know what I'm saying? And right. I'm like, or people from L.A. or whatever who, yeah. like, tapping in with people out here in Dallas. And it just, that's just the beauty of it. You know what I'm saying? All these other connections that have nothing to do with me. Yeah. That might have come from me, that has nothing to do with me. And they're going to go on and collaborate, do whatever, whatever, and I don't, I'm really joking and shit, I really don't, I don't care, I, I like that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. happens and shit, you know what I'm saying, but when people take initiative and do what, and start something, do whatever and shit, and Fruit Palooza can always be like the network, you come, like, a, I be telling motherfuckers, like, with media, I, I, they come through to Fruit Palooza, mm -hmm. and then... Now they have, they don't gain, like, if you work for Palooza well, you go through the whole circuit, you can gain, like, 50, 60 to 100 followers just off the, like, Kid Clo or any of the photographers that are just out there. Just off of the hype of the event. Exactly. Honest. All the photographers, they gain so many followers just off, like, just tossing shit out, people tagging them or whatever, mm. you know what I'm saying? And then you come through the next event. Now they know you or they, and there's so many people who have, I've just seen where dope online. Yeah. They've never even been a part of any event. And I bring them in the circle. And then now they're going on to... Before I know it, motherfuckers on tour with this mainstream artist yeah. or this. And it just... And it blows my mind. But I, fuck, I like that. I like, like... That's the priceless part. Just empowering yeah. people to... You come through and you see all these creatives doing whatever. And it's like... Even if it's something you're slacking on, you're going to leave like... All right, I gotta get on my A game. Yeah. Shit, let's get. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy like, to think about like what football pools. I remember. I still remember the first football pools with the cop car coming in and shit. Yeah. Compared to the, the last few, like I, I like the second and third football pools. I, I pretty much knew everyone. Yeah. And then the next ones came. The next ones came. I'm like, damn. I'm. I know fifty percent. I know thirty percent. I know ten percent of the people there now. And it's just like, boom. Like, where is this even coming from? But I feel like it's just the organic growth of the genuine camaraderie and connection of artists and people Bad. just facilitated by the whole environment like like you said about the ego there's not really an, a bunch of egos there everyone's dope and everyone fucks with each other and it's like a good happy time there's no and like, no, that's why i try it. i would never have no vip or never have no seclusion or Green and that's shit. why I try to have a, the stage as small as possible yeah. and shit like just so I don't want no no everybody's like equal and shit half the time yeah I'll be in the crowd like like enjoying the damn show too yeah. you know what I'm saying and then like I said he was, it's to where we were just on the oh yeah the shit you said we was on the news in on the news in Denver mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying 
And that's just, I guess, the... Because I was... Okay, I had tweeted about it, how... What's funny is this shit started in Dallas. I haven't... This hasn't been on Dallas news. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. All the, like, the major media platforms, a lot of the writers for these media platforms, they see me out, and the funny shit, they're all like, oh, hey, I see you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Da, da, da. But this is back to what we're talking about with Dallas. They would never... I guess I, I, I don't want to say never. They just haven't yet done a... You think you got to, like, mm, fuck with them personally? I don't... A shit? lot of them I fuck with personally already. For real? And they would... They don't, like... You, whether the news or just, like, major outlets or some of these writers, they know me, they know of me, they follow me. Yeah. They see what I'm doing. But, I don't know, some of them, they also saw me come up, which you would think uh, that and should be more... And bypass them type shit. I don't even want to even think of it that way, but sometimes that's how it is. You know right, what I'm right, right. They saw him, so, so it's like something in their mind. So they see me in person, and it's like, oh man, keep doing. I see what you keep doing, what you're doing, man. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. But then, okay, if you're that proud, if you see what I'm doing, you have the platform. You know what I'm saying? Action speed. Like now I don't want to. I'm not gonna like bet because okay. So now in Denver, I was on the news. I ain't beg nobody for it. Mm-hmm. I ain't do nothing different. This is my first one in Denver, yeah. but they saw what it was doing so much to where they wrote a whole story about it, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, on the news and shit, you know what I'm saying, shout out to Denver Westward, you know what I'm saying, so it's where I don't need it per se, I don't need it, so I'm, I'm never going to chase it, because yeah. if anything, I gave that, even when they posted that, it was the other way around, I'm, people are... It's got so many shares on Twitter, on Facebook, yeah. on IG and shit. They're getting tagged. And it's, oh, man, da, da, da. so it's it's getting more traction to your entity rather than to right. to me. So I don't necessarily need it, but it just goes to it goes to show. It's just that, I guess, that, that crabs in a bucket mentality, you know what I'm saying? But then mm-hmm. the beauty about it is, like, I don't care because I don't need like if I needed it then I'd really be hurt. It's just right. It's more so funny now and shit, and I can laugh at it because I don't. Yeah, and even besides, I mean, it's been it's celebrities that do this off the street. I mean, we've had Chingy, uh, Mike Jones, Lil Flip, Murphy, Murphy Lee. Lee, and in LA, Max O'Cream, he he pulled up on too. like a on some love shit. Take money, and that's on, that was on some love shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Max or Cream, I ain't, we ain't paying him a dime. Yeah. He pulled up just off the love because he remembered, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. These are people I've done like shits with when they were coming up. So, and if it's, you were that other type of promoter, never, never you know what I'm saying? Nah. And it's only, it's, it's a, so the people that, uh, the people that I look up to that I need to, they fuck with me. They, they I'm there my phone and shit, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I don't need anybody. Again, this is past local now. When when it was still local, that's when that's when I probably would have been looking forward to like a right now. It's not even. It's international now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's it's too late. Like as far as a some like a like local um, acknowledgement. Yeah. It's past that now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. They 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 missed the bus. Pretty much. Yeah, and but I mean, it's still it's the bus still gonna come around. It's gonna come you know what around, man. At whatever point, if not, like the the bus gonna keep going. Like it's yeah. not, it's it's not stopping. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, not, yeah. and it's just up to you and say. And it just shows how actually it's going to show how in tune you are with the culture. Because as far as Dallas goes, and as far as like what's going on in the underground scene of Dallas, and it, besides even the underground scene, because I have headliners all the time, so this is not just underground. Like, yeah. this is headliners mingling with underground artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, you'd catch Mike Jones, for example. He was just supposed to do three songs. He ended up doing, like, he did a long ass like 10, 11 songs. Flip, too. You know what I'm saying? A little flip freestyle for, like, 10 minutes and shit. You know I what I'm saying? I got that recording, too. All these are just, all this is just off, like, I can't even, it's certain shit. Again, there's just no rules. I can explain Certain shit to you is just I have certain conversations, certain interactions, and people just people just want to throw it back to me. You know what I'm saying? Pause, but like mm. so it's just it's just general. Like till today, me and Murphy Lee, I, t- I text him right now and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I was a I wasn't uh, asking for no. Fa- I was a genuine fan, and I still am. You know what I'm saying? And we just we 
I build relationships that way, you know what I'm saying? So, all that being said, aside from, like, a certain industry, what... What would you get? What would you tell the audience about like life being like? What's the main goal in life, in your in your perspective? All right, life life is short. Life is so in the grand scheme of this thing, man. Let's say you live like 80, 90, 100 years in the grand scheme of the billions of years. Earth has existed. Earth will continue to. The, Stars, light years, being a part, like every, okay, it's so short, but being you, you like trapped within your own embodiment to where it seems, of course, it seems so real to you and it seems so long. But in the grand scheme, as much as you feel like certain things matter, it just doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. To a fly, a fly might feel like his its life is so extravagant, and the fly lives for a week. Right. You know what I'm saying? But within that week, that seems like the same way you look at a hundred years. That same way that fly looks at that same week. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So we're we're I feel like we're micro embodiments of this whole God entity, and now we have this power to control. It's this is this pendulum of control where it's like this fate and then there's like faith and then it's like what you can control, what you can't control, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so you just got to do everything within your control to make this short life the happiest you can for yourself. For yourself, that's the main thing. That's all that matters. Now it's certain tricks and ways to do it, but Again, money, all this sh- money is good and all it helps you be comfortable, but all that shit doesn't matter at all. It's just like the genuine relationships, the genuine like people you've been blessed to meet, the the impact you're able to make, the changes you're able to make on other people. Mm-hmm. That's really what lasts forever. You know what I'm saying? That's what goes what stands the test of time, whether you're here or not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's just, it's like, this thing is short and you can't think too hard into it. At the same time, you just gotta like live, live as pure and as genuine as possible. Of course, like eliminate, you got, y'all got to hop into the fifth and sixth dimension and shit and mm-hmm. just, and just live more towards your spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Less in this world as much as you're in this world, you gotta be live outside of this world. You gotta live within your spirit, and you're just gonna realize a lot of things are aren't aren't as important. A lot of things aren't as as um, a lot of things don't matter. You know what I'm saying? And it's just more so about just nurturing your spirit. That's what continues, and just making sure your spirit is happy. Your spirit is at a point of peace. That way, when this flesh ends. Whenever you're 80, 100, 60, tomorrow, whenever that expires, your spirit continues in that state of bliss. So yeah. you can start that here. That's that heaven on earth. And then, of course, work hard at things that's going to make you happy. So if it's an if it's a, a talent you have, art, craft, whatever you're passionate about, working hard at that is always going to make you happy. Mm-hmm. Do that. You're not going to work hard at something and nothing happens from it. You know what I'm saying? So work hard at whatever you're passion, passionate at every single day. Keep learning. Keep getting better. And on the long run, it's all going to make sense on its own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to meet the back to that pendulum. All the things. These are all the things you can control. The things you can't control, the universe meets you halfway. The universe is going to is going to meet you halfway how how it's supposed to happen. So yeah. certain things might look be like a dis, as a disappointment to you. If you're driving to Dallas, you might catch a flat tire and, ah, oh, fuck, why did this happen? That's out of your control. Yeah. There may have been an accident a minute later, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's actually the blessing right there, that flat tire. Yeah. So it's just perspective and shit. If it's out of your control, just know the universe is 
working it out for you. All the everything negative that you feel, it's all positive. Just every L is like a learning experience, and that's what I say. An L is a lesson. It's not a. It's all not a loss. it is. That's all it is. Every time you take an L or you fail at something or you think you do, you learn so much about it. Mm-hmm. You don't repeat that same mistake again. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then you can teach someone else, like if you see them going down. The same Facts. Way. And you just gotta. That, that way, you just keep that tunnel vision there, and mm-hmm. then just allow, allow the universe to happen. You stay pure. You work hard. Stay genuine with everybody. You give more than you get with every scenario. Make sure, make sure you're giving more than you're getting out of it. Make sure you. Adding more value than you're getting out of it with every relationship. Mm-hmm. At least try to give more than you get. In, you know what I'm saying? That way, worst case scenario is going to be even. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think everything else is going to like just work itself out. And you you live a happy life. And you die happy as fuck. That's, that's yeah. some words of wisdom from a young but old man. For real, though. I was like... <clears throat> I was planning on doing this podcast like half games and shit, right. but I don't. I think that would diminish like all the vital information for everyone's daily life as an artist. So I'm just gonna like skip the game for this episode because this episode was a lot more. Uh, uh, there was a lot more teachable lessons in this right. than I feel like uh, a game could present. Like. Obviously, nah, you like, can, we play one game. I mean, okay. <laughs> Alright, we'll do one game. We'll do a... Uh, we'll call, it's called This or That. I'll so you're gonna... A, I'll take a shot. So what I want you to do is kind of like... Out of two options, I want you to answer. And yeah. give me a little little like reason why you like this pr- in, instead of that. Alright. So first one, we'll go with... Uh, since you're drinking, we'll go with dark or light liquor. <sighs> dark... Why? Um, I feel like dark liquor is more it's more soothing, I would say. You have some bad experiences like, with white. No, okay, so I'm not even one of them that like, oh I can't make I'm I'm a drinker, so I'd mix dark light, I'd m- drink beer, forties, whatever and shit. But nowadays I try not I don't I don't smoke anymore, I don't get drunk anymore, I don't I don't, I stay so focused and shit, but dark is like smoother. Specifically, I'm talking like Hennessy and Jack mm-hmm. Daniels and shit like that compared to whatever the higher brand light would like Patron or tequila yeah. or, or um, fucking Ciroc and all that. I'd rather go with like a Patron, I mean a Hennessy and some Coke or just a Hennessy straight. What about rum? You like rum? I drink rum too. What's this rum? I don't know what that is. Whiskey. It's strong as fuck though. I can't can't deal with that. All right. Uh, this is this is a, a Mecca Jackson question. I had this in mind when I wrote this. Ah. Wingstop or Buffalo Wild Wings? Oh, I don't play with me. Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I'm there every Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? What about Pluckers or or BWW? Ah. I still okay Buffalo Wild Wings specifically because I, I get the blazing, and that's like the I'm just hooked on that flavor. So mm. in general, yeah, Pluckers I, I only get the blazing bone in, and they got like two for one special in two days. Yeah, but Pluckers it depends. Pluckers on Buffalo Hot is pretty fire too. Yeah, and on Thursdays they have the all you can eat boneless, but it's like the Pluckers be having the tenders and shit. Yeah, and um. But Mondays, I think they have all you can eat bone in. But I feel like the shit. Buffalo Wild Wings blazing taste better. Yeah, they always come with the box of. Well, okay, okay, okay. This one, Buffalo Wild Wings or Pollo Reggio? Don't play with me. Red, <laughs> uh, hey, I'm gonna say it right now, right? You, y'all gonna be able to like <laughs> rewind, run this video back, like in another ten years. I'm gonna own an Pollo Reggio franchise, right? Yo. Just here, right here, and watch. It's like it's that YBN like, and Corday like interview about him getting the Grammy. Grammy you know, yeah, because <laughs> look, I'm like the number one. I probably eat the most red here in this world. I'm like their number one <laughs> brand ambassador. 
Ask any of my friends, anybody that knows me. Knows, Anywhere we go. Exactly. Knows about Where Red Hill and Mecca. Everybody knows. Like, you pull up to, and you pull up to the one of Cooper and Arlington, pull up to the one of Pioneer. They know me. They know my order and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the manager, and shout out to Takaria too and shit. You know what I'm saying? They slide me a little little extra bag and shit if I come like right before 10, right before they close sometimes. Yeah, if they yeah. got some left, they might pull toss a little two, three pieces extra in my bag and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be some glo- global enterprises of Poirier here. You, you know heard it here on the Stop Scrolling Podcast. First. And y'all got to stop pronouncing that shit. Regio. Poirier Regio. Regio. I'm like, nah. Right. All right, uh, let's go. Let's go with social media. What do you? I know you. You're an avid Twitter user, but I also know you're an avid Facebook user. Which one of those two? Oh, I'm a Twitter nigga for sure. For like, and for Twitter, stop suspending my damn. Da- <laughs> I'm on my like sixth account and shit. Like this last time, y'all, they suspended me for saying the N word. Can you imagine? They What's suspended about? my my account too. I don't know what happened, but. They said, because, okay, so Iggy Azalea, she reported my Twitter account because I had posted, I'm going to say why, yeah, I can say that shit now. Uh, go ahead, suspend this. <laughs> <laughs> they going to suspend your pocket. Fuck you, too. <laughs> <laughs> <A> limit. <laughs> to stop scrolling. Make sure you don't copyright it and like put a cease and cease. For real. So right. I had tweeted, I was like, I don't even remember, I think she was, she was going, I don't remember who she was going at, T.I. or somebody. Or she has said some sideways shit. If you, if you know about Iggy, you know, she's like a cultural vulture. She's been, she's gone at fucking Q-tip and all kinds of stuff. So I was like, as a culture, we should have been got, this is what I tweeted, almost verbatim. I was like, as a culture, we should have been got Iggy Azalea and yes, Jules out. But y'all niggas so damn Stockholm syndromed out. To where you let a white bitch slap your grandma, she got a fat ass. And that was the tweet that might have been harsh, but hey, <laughs> she, reported, <laughs> she reported my account, blocked me, and Twitter just been on my ass since then. So they like suspended me. Damn. And then I started, so now like, don't follow Mecca, that's gone. Don't follow Mecca underscore, that's gone. Um, Which you right now? Um, which other one is gone? Don't, don't follow me, underscore Ka is gone. So I'm at don't follow Mecca with two A's. Damn. <laughs> yeah, follow me at don't follow. So now I'm watching what I say and I, I know the last thing, I know how it works with keywords and these trigger words. You could post porn on Twitter, but then you say the N word and fucking. While being black. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay. And then I've been appealing like. Context like this. La- this last one, last time I got suspended, all I tweeted was I tweeted a homie. We were talking about a video, and I was like, I was like, this got to go in. We're talking about Mario Winans. I don't want to know video, and I was like, this got to go in Guinness Book of Record for most sus song of all time. I was like, have some, have some respect, my nigga. And that's it. They yeah, suspended that for hateful conduct. That doesn't make sense. Huh? That doesn't make sense. So Twitter. Y'all gonna watch this soon. Y'all gonna regret y'all suspending this For account. Real? You know what I'm saying? All right, uh, another one. Who would win in a fight? A bear or a gorilla? Mm-hmm. We'll go grizzly bear or a silverback. Damn. Hmm. Joe Rogan had the same discussion. He said, I forgot. I think he said gorilla. Yeah, I think a gorilla has more. I think a gorilla's supposed to be stronger. I feel like they can they live more intelligent. It's more, yeah, that too. And a gorilla weighs like what, like two tons or some shit? Alexa, how much does a gorilla weigh? A gorilla typically weighs between 220 pounds and 440 pounds when fully grown. That's uh, it. That's, like, <laughs> that's, that's like two tons. Now, nah, ask, ask her about, <laughs> uh, ask her about the bear. I heard it was two t- Alexa, you- how much does a grizzly bear weigh? Alexa, how much does a grizzly bear weigh? They're not too much different. Alright, ask how much a gorilla can lift. Maybe that's Alexa, how much can a gorilla lift? Hmm, I don't know that. Bitch. We don't know that. We don't know that. <laughs> I swear I seen something about two tons somewhere. But I know, know like the gr- like the bear can slash and shit, but 
I feel like the gorilla is so A gorilla is more agile also. Like, it can, he's like, like, solid. Yeah. It can, like, jump and fly and, or, like... And it's got those, those teeth, too. Like, argh. Yeah. That shit's scary. Like, if a gorilla came at me compared to a bear, like, I feel like you, you'd be able to live from a bear if you played dead. What would you but do a with gorilla, a gorilla, dude? Like... I'll just start acting like a monkey and just like, oh. no, fool, like, <laughs> shit. I, I act like I'm one of it, like. <laughs> he might see you as a threat, though. <laughs> Come on, rip off your arms and shit and start drumming and no. shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all gonna be running, it's gonna chase y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase y'all too and shit, like. I mean, full character and shit. All right, so, like, I know you don't got no tattoos. No. You only got your ears pierced. Yep. If you were to get anything else, what would it be? A tattoo or a piercing? And if it was a tattoo, what would it be? And if it was a piercing, what would it be? Somewhere. Let me see. All right, if I were to get a... Hmm, you ever wanted to get a tattoo? I feel like when I was little, I thought I would like be hella tatted. Mm. But this is before everybody was like on a tattoo wave and shit. I was going to go yeah. against the grain and be on some like rock star like... Get a sleeve and shit, but it's then rock star now tonight, everybody man. and they mom. It was like that whole like Lil Wayne, Tiger, Wiz, snap back and tattoo wave. Mm. People were getting tattoos just cause I was like, hell no, I'm not getting one just cause <laughs> everybody else got one. You remember when we were in Austin? You were talking about like hella face tat. Everyone got hella face yeah, tattoos. Yeah, now everybody got hella. But if I were to get a, if I were to get a tattoo, it might be like. So maybe like a, like my mom's face on my rib or somewhere, mm. or but it would have to be like some dope ass like, meaning three D like, yeah. have to get like the dopest or like, some hella like just different and shit. Yeah. At one point, I think I was gonna get like, L like L cross V E like, underneath my lips, just so I couldn't show my girl and pictures. <laughs> But then it was going to be like, um, I guess, L cross V E. So that's like live, love. Mm -hmm. I was oh, like, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's tight. And then I heard like tattoos under your lips. Those like fade off after a while. Oh, shit. So I was going to get that. But then. So you get now, a piercing. Plus tattoos hurt and shit. Hell nah. Yeah, sitting there for hours. Like I'm if you got your mom's face and shit, you be sitting there for that's hours. That's why I'm never getting one. You want me to go through all this pain for that for something I'm going to like. You're paying for this pain, too. Yeah, and then I know a month later I'm going to want to add something to it or, like... <laughs> or get another one. Yeah, or get like, another hell one. not. All right, uh, let's, let's the last one. About the border. Would you go Mexico or Canada? I go to Me I've been to Mexico, and I'll go again. I went to Tijuana. I'll tell you yeah. about it, right? We drove to Tijuana from... Uh, so we got done with Food Palooza in L.A., at 2 a.m. and motherfuckers like, hey, let's go to let's go to Mexico, and I was like, yeah, let's go to Mexico. Y'all not about that life. <laughs> like, come on, let's go. Y'all, you ain't about that life. I'm like, come on, let's go. You ain't about. All right, all right, there we, all right, we go. We gonna see who's not about that life. <laughs> so we had a Turo. You don't know what a Turo is? It's like fucking like um, Airbnb of cars. They got them out in L.A. You can get like other people. You can rent other people's cars for like. Like twenty dollars and shit a day, yeah. And you get like a free tour the first time you sign up, so you can just keep signing up every day and get free cars. That's just a little lick I just gave y'all. You know, Thank me later. Yeah. So we started driving, and I'm waiting up for these niggas. I'm waiting on somebody to change their mind and shit. I don't want to be the bitch to change their mind. <laughs> I'm waiting. On, and I'll be like, all right, all right, let's go. We keep driving and shit, and then. Nigga, I end up dozing off, and I wake up, and these fucking no good for nothing niggas have me. We like on the border now and shit. Ah! No we turning really, back now. We really have, and because we we drove to them San Diego, it's like Tijuana's like on the border of like San Diego and shit. Mm -hmm. So we like park, and then we like walk across. All right, this is a funny story. So we like no, park. One thing, one thing. So we like park. And like across some bridge, kind of. We like walk across, and we get to like the. The actual border, the border station or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so my homie, he's he's 
he's like half Cuban, so he kind of speaks Spanish. He's done this before. Mm. So he like, he goes first, he has his passport, shows his passport. So me and my other homie, we don't have a, we don't have a passport. So we just have our IDs, right? right? But he had told us already, now nah, we're going to be good. Da, 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 da. So I give him mine and then my homie gives him his ID. And then the policia dude looks at it and looks at us and he's like, you th follow me. Nigga, I lost my nigga. I lost it. I'm like, so we're like, and I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my other, cause my other homie he's in South Wales. I'm like, huh? He's like, oh, and I'm like, huh? And I'm like, I'm like, nigga, I, I changed my mind. I don't even want to go no more. Like, I'm like trying it's, to see how to, real. It's getting too how real. to tell this nigga, like, bro, it's all good. Like, we don't even want to go. Like, yeah, we changed yeah. our mind. This nigga, so we in some like. He takes us to some room, and it's like an in interrogation room. Mm. And y'all like, are still in the states, right? We in the in the no, we still in the I guess in the border yeah. in the station. It's okay. like a station. Yeah. And mind you, right now it's like it's four or five a.m. We don't drove three hours here. It's five a.m. We're drunk and yeah, shit. We've yeah, been yeah. drunk from food palooza and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like faded. So now. Me and this nigga, we like sitting in this room. He closes the door, leaves us. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck is going? On? I'm like, bro, nah, come on, man. Like, what the fuck, y'all niggas got me on and yeah. shit. And then I'm thinking, should I like get on my phone and like fucking record some shit just right. in case? Because now I'm thinking all the movies I don't see. And I'm like, what if they think it's they like ask us where's the girl and then I'm like nigga oh, shit. what girl and I'm trying to they're talking, gonna break you down you start a you know, shit I'm trying to talk in English <laughs> these niggas are speaking Spanish whooping my ass then <laughs> then they try to put like a broomstick through my penis right. and I'm, nigga I'm thinking the worst I'm like no like, we seen this shit in movies they gonna torture us we're never gonna see my fucking family <laughs> for real so then this motherfucker comes back and we like and then he like he's like um, what you go to Tijuana for, huh? <laughs> and then and he like hey, you wanna go Hong Kong? You wanna go what? And I'm like I'm thinking Hong Kong. What the fuck is what? Talking about? And so my homie's like no, I'm, yeah, I'm, we, we're just going sightseeing. We've just never been, so we're just um, we just decided to go sightseeing. Yeah. Da, da, da. And he like looks at us. Then he like goes out. Then he comes back in. With our IDs, like it'll be twenty dollars each. <laughs> and, nigga, I'm like, <laughs> quickly, I'm like, I gave Give me this nigga the fuck out of here. I gave this nigga twenty dollars, so we like walking. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, this. and so we're like, so I'm, I'm, me, we link up with our other homie who's waiting on us out, out there. The human one. Yeah. yeah. So we like walk out. So right out after you get out this little station. Now you're in Mexico and shit. Yeah. And on the street, is it's like like kids and families, they're like begging for money and shit. Oh, shit. Like, right at the border? Yeah, like right walking out there. Uh -huh. And granted, again, it's 4 or 5 a.m. Then I'm like thinking, wait, hold up. I was like, bro, we're here in Mexico. We ain't even signed nothing, no paperwork. Like, ah, uh, like what if this nigga is setting us up? For what if, real? What if he got that? somebody down the corner? Who's about to kidnap us, sell our organs, and niggas ain't got no, there's no proof we're even here at right, all. And shit. Right. I'm looking at my phone, there's no service on my phone and shit. And now I'm oh, like, oh, fuck oh, it. I was like, bro, let's just go. Oh. Then my homie, who's been there before, he's like laughing. He thinks this shit is a joke. I'm like, nigga, like, nah. Like, so as, as we're walking, it's, it's hella sketch ass motherfuckers. All these people trying to ask for money and shit. Nigga, what this one? Were y'all walking? You have a car and shit. No, we're walking and shit. Yeah, and then this small, this one child and shit. He like keeps asking for money. This nigga, I give this nigga ten. I feel so bad. I gave him ten dollars and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's like say, speaking Spanish, but he's like hungry. Yada yeah. yada. Anyway, we end up walking, walking, and then we go to. We end up getting a cab. Mm -hmm. We get the cab as soon as possible and shit. Mm -hmm. And then. So we go to immediately to like the little red light district and shit. At five, five in the morning. Five in the morning. But when I so we went to this. So this nigga, this nigga's like, yeah, well, let's let's go to Hong Kong. 
And I'm like, what the fuck what is Hong? Why y'all keep saying Hong Kong? Hong Kong is like their biggest fucking. It's on the red light. The red light district's like a big like Vegas style strip club slash. Oh really? Fucking bar, but it's like just popping twenty four seven. Why they call Hong Kong though? I don't know and shit. So we get there, nigga. We hop out and this motherfuckers like rushing us, like, hey, whatever you need, da, 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 to try to sell us like, like drugs and shit, like drugs, Maybe. alcohol, oh. whatever. Damn. So we go change money, nigga. I change like forty dollars to like like seven hundred and seventy pesos. Yeah, nigga, I balled out, nigga. Really? Like, so we end up, we didn't even walk to some liquor store. And then I bought like some tequila shit. Mm-hmm. Then we like, nigga, we already drunk by the way, but that whole shit has sobered me up. So we like, we get drunk again. Then we just, nigga, we walk in Hong Kong. As soon as we step in, it's all these fucking. Well, all right, all right, that's it. I'm not disclosing yeah, yeah, more, keep that, more keep information. That. Keep that on the wraps and shit. It was, it was lit. We, yeah. we, we had we had we had a great time. How'd y'all make it back? And, same so we just, way. we party, party, and then we like, um, nigga, we partied, it was till like noon, and then we got like some authentic tacos and shit, then we mm-hmm. walked to like the, I don't remember what the Arc of, it's like the Arc of Mexico or some shit, and we like did some sightseeing, we met some people there, and we, um. Y'all still running off of no sleep? We didn't sleep that whole, granted, okay, this was a Friday, then we had another event that Saturday night in L.A., so, I just so right after y'all come from Mexico, it's like damn. So we we, we end up driving back straight to sound check and shit, man. and then I hit sound check, went to the ho- back to the hotel, shower, changed, came back to the venue, started the show, kept drinking again. I just didn't sleep that day. By that night time, was like, bro, what the fuck was just in Mexico this For morning? Real, right? <laughs> no sleep. And, all and, okay, so after shit. all that, nigga, so we walk in. Now we coming back and shit. We drunk, we laughing, laughing, laughing. Then it's the same shit. Now we coming back in. Mm. My homie walks through his eye turn. These motherfuckers close to the side. I'm like, no. <laughs> but then this time is the reverse. It's like, well, how you get in Mexico then? <laughs> if, oh, shit. Yeah, because they have oh, no paperwork. Shit. They have nothing. Nothing was stamped. Nothing. And then we trying to explain, like, yeah, we didn't. We're trying to explain, yeah, we didn't have a, a passport, so um, we told him we we're just going to be, and we didn't want to, we didn't know we was going to get somebody in trouble by saying we right. paid $20 right. or whatever, whatever. And then our homie that knows Spanish, he like, he came and like talked to him and shit. Mm-hmm. And then, so they held us for a little second and shit. Damn. And then, then the, that's so, probably the scary. So part. now I'm now I'm like, oh, we're never coming back to America. <laughs> like, I was like, we don't have. Brush up on your Spanish. And shit. I was like, this Trump is gonna get this wall. <laughs> 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 I was like, uh, I was like, we're gonna be stuck behind the wall. Like, damn. <laughs> we don't have no service, nothing, nigga. We. That's, we, no that's, backpack, no, we're just as is, nigga. It's like going back in the 80s and shit. For like, real. And so, nothing. but they, they ended up letting us back in. And that's why I know, bro, this whole Trump wall shit mm. is be, Nigga, I went to Mexico and back. This no passport, nothing. So I know this whole Trump wall, everything. This nigga's delusional. Like, I paid $20. Yeah. If I had a thousand dollars, nigga, these niggas is not tripping. Like you, they going, probably would have gave you an escort and everything. Yeah, you going in and out of Mex. I, they, I didn't get searched even. I forgot to mention that I didn't get searched not one time even coming back into America. What? I could have had some brack in my brack. This was like <laughs> this was like recent, wasn't it? This was Very in recent. this was in June and shit. Yeah, this year. yeah in June, yeah, or oh, June or July, yeah. But I have no. I, I didn't get searched. They didn't even wow. pat me down. I could have had a gun. You could you could have been. I didn't go through a metal detector. I could have had a gun through in and out. I could have had all kinds of drugs and shit. And shit. I didn't get searched now once and shit. That's so, kind of crazy though. That's how I know that's whole wall like, shit is BS. That's some like, real shit. Yeah. Wow. But anyway, yeah, that was crazy. Uh, you got anything coming up like? Because I'm dropping these shits, like, in a couple days, so we'll be seeing this in a couple days. What you got in the immediate future to distant future or whatever? Um, so I got this stuff. Well, I'm doing Take Money's party mm-hmm. next Saturday. Here in Dallas, right? 
then I probably I don't even know maybe I may have announced this by then I don't even know if it's gonna fall through or how it's going but 50 cent in in Dallas December 14th that's a thing well, yeah are you I'm hosting yeah who's doing it yeah we're working shit out right now oh, I got you I got you but yeah. And then we need that DMX um, though. We need that DMX. He's still in rehab and shit. Oh shit. And then yeah, it's just gonna be more food paloozas, more cities. I don't know. Follow me or don't follow Mecca and shit. And two A's on Twitter, and then just don't follow Me M E K A actually on um on I G and yeah, it should be here on the uh, screen here somewhere probably right there. Damn. But yeah, so uh, yeah, that was my homeboy Mecca Jackson on um, the first episode of the new season of Stop Smoking Podcast. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, if you don't look, these hoodies make people the quality and shit. They gonna be, I'll make more available. They've been selling out Afro Paloozas, but everybody, a lot of people been requesting them. They can't make it to the show. Yada yada yada. I might have them online. Just you want them to sign it? Bring a sharpie. Uh -huh. <laughs> But yeah, you know alright. Hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was the Stop Smoking Podcast episode 13. Yeah, I'm just gonna eat. Alright, episode 13 with Mecca Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Signing out. Yeah. 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 Waking up and up in the lake. I'm just living out my dream.